I'm going to explain the concept of transform learning in the context of computer vision quickly and precisely. Now, the reason we're doing transform learning is so that we can learn some function f, which is going to be a convolutional neural network, which takes in a picture, and it's going to output the class of that picture. Okay, so we have a known number of classes where at say three, maybe for our problem, we're trying to learn how to map a picture as input into the output of either apple, banana, or cucumber. Okay, so we have three classes and we are trying to, given whatever picture it is, maybe it has, maybe a picture looks something like this, where it has an apple in the top right, and we want that to be categorized. So f of that thing, this is the same as above, just in picture form, f of that is say one, okay? And because this is corresponding to apple, banana, and cucumber, whatever it is, it's just a, a distinguishing saying, this is that image, okay? This is that class of that image. Now. We could do this by making our own convolutional neural network by scratch or copying an architecture of an existing one. But the easiest thing to do is to copy the architecture of an existing one and use almost all of its parameters that it's already learned on a different task, but transfer it to your task. So it's transfer learning because we are learning how to transfer this knowledge from the other neural network into yours, okay? We're transferring the learning that, hap that it had into our own learning for our problem. So how can we do that? Well, we need some neural network that is already existent and trained. So we'll call it VGG. This is a known neural network and say that it was trained and it has been, it's, this is existing. It is trained on ImageNet, which is a huge repository of images that is similar to your problem, but not exactly the same. So maybe it's actually gonna be more complex than your problem because this neural network, its job is to it, it can learn a vast number of pictures. So maybe VGG was already trained on taking an image, same as yours, same type of image, except now what it can do is output, say a thousand different classes. So maybe it knows actually how to do um, a monkey. So maybe it can transfer it. Maybe it can take an image and recognize if it's a monkey or whether it's a zebra or all the way up until a thousand things, say that it's a thousand classes and say this last one is just an ape is what came to mind from reading the monkey, okay? So say that this is existent already, and it is, that VGG has learned how to do this. Now, when we say trained on ImageNet, we mean it has learned a ton of parameters, okay? It has learned a ton of parameters on how to do this well. It has seen the training set, people have done it with a validation set, and how to accurately get a good score on a test set of information by learning parameters, knowing how to generalize the pattern between a picture and what that class is for its specific output. So it's able to do this. But what's fascinating is that we were able to transfer almost all of these trained learned parameters and the model architecture and what I mean architecture, I mean, so VGG is something like this, where it takes in an image, and then we'll just say that it looks like this, where we have a bunch of convolutional layers. Yes, people often draw a convolutional layer like this because it's a 3D thing, but it doesn't really matter. The point is that we do a bunch of stuff in the middle, and maybe there's pooling, maybe there is batch normalization. At some point, we're gonna make it look like a feed-forward neural network, and wherever there is parameters to be learned here, and there is millions of them, we can actually borrow all of those except that last layer. Now that last layer is going to be a thousand dimensional because its job is to do a thousand classes, where this one is the probability of the picture being a monkey. And this one is the probability of it being a zebra. And the last one would be the probability of it being an ape and whatever, everything in the middle. It's going to sum to one because it's some probability distribution. Now, the only thing that's wrong is this last thing. We're happy with this existent model architecture because this is all for learning pictures. It's fascinating that the only thing we have to change is this next thing over here. So let me just zoom in on this again. I'm gonna make a big, big scene of this because this is the important part of transfer learning. Say that we have this image, I'm just drawing the same thing as before. This is an, a neural network called VGG, and it doesn't really matter what neural network it is. We take an image, and so it's gonna do a bunch of stuff in the middle. 
and it's going to be feed forward neural network, just normal dense layers, and then it's going to have, say, a, a thousand things. Okay, so this is a thousand wide. Except what we do in transfer learning is we keep all of these parameters, we so-called freeze them. Okay, if I write freeze, that's meaning do not train these neural network layers. We still are going to use them in a calculation, but the point of training is to learn parameters. We are not going to touch those parameters. It's the same thing as like linear regression, where in linear regression, you learn how to fit the beta one, that's the slope, and the beta naught. So the beta one is the, the beta one is this slope, and the beta naught is this lift here. Okay, so how high we lift it. It's the same thing here. We are learning all of these parameters. We freeze all of these parameters, and what we do is we chop this off. So I'm just going to erase this. We I'm going to erase that a little bigger. Okay, so instead of the very last layer where its job is to get a thousand different classes. We want that to, to be for our problem. And for ours, in this example, it's going to be different for your example, but we want it to learn three different things for apple, banana, or cucumber. So that this is probability of apple. This is probability of banana, writing that for short, and probability of cucumber, writing that for short as well. All we have to do is learn the parameters that are involved in this middle piece here, keeping everything else the same, and then this is probably, not guaranteed, but will probably do very well on the task of recognizing apples, bananas, and cucumbers. Thank you for watching.